Good morning. My name's Leith Baker. I'm a father of two beautiful boys. I get as excited about innovation as anybody, but it's very easy to get carried away with looking for cool things to do with new technology. And this is a challenge for humanitarian assistance because we have such challenges with some of the core things that we do. What I want to do today is talk to you about getting back to basics and using technology as old as the Palm Pilot and techniques that have been in the private sector for decades to revolutionize humanitarian assistance. I'm a humanitarian. I've worked for 13 years in places like Afghanistan, Pakistan, Somalia, and East Timor. What I've found is that humanitarian organizations are essentially information organizations. Without information about beneficiaries and needs, they're unable to target and deliver assistance. And without documenting those assistance programs, they're unable to get the next round of funding. In March, the Harvard Business Review had a short article about uh, advising nonprofits to start using the operational data about their programs and their beneficiaries to make decisions and before getting into big data ambitions. The private sector might call this business intelligence. They called it medium data, and I thought that was clever. So what is medium data? Well, it's going to be structured. It'll fit in a table or a relational database. It's steady. It's driven by project cycle, predictable project cycle events like assessments, registrations, or, uh, or monitoring activities. And it's significantly smaller than big data, but it's not small. In 2012, the humanitarian community spent $18 billion serving 76 million people. These programs were driven by assessments, registrations, monitoring exercises, and evaluations. These programs were driven by data. How much data? Well, we actually have no idea. And where is all this information? Well, for the most part, it's captured on paper, entered into Excel, and if we're lucky, it's on some kind of filing tree where we can find it, but more often, it's on someone's laptop. At M Fieldwork, we've been working with humanitarian organizations in the Horn of Africa to start capturing their data digitally. They use our mobile application to collect information in the field, and then they use our web application to, to access that information through dashboards and analytics. This is some of the first real-time insights these organizations have had into their programs. In remote areas like Guriel, Somalia, the United Nations has used our system to, do a food, to remotely monitor a food security assessment, where they were able to SMS methodological updates to the enumerators in real time. The quality and efficiency improvements are dramatic. But what I'm really excited about is this idea of medium data. Imagine what you could do with a, a typhoon's worth of structured data updated in real time from all the projects. Well, at the project level, you could have real accountability with geo-referenced information about project outputs. You could, start to tr you could start to track beneficiaries over time and adjust your targeting or look to predict needs. For the organization, you could start to share information in real time with your donors, your beneficiaries, or the public, and you could start to compare strategies between projects, between countries, and over time. Coordination has always faced a, a, a significant challenge with information sharing. And what we've found is that, uh, <laughs> uh, that there's a, they face a significant cost to, to sharing the information. They face transactional costs to collect and, and, and share that information. So if it's more efficient, if it's higher quality, and if it has all these extra benefits, why isn't everyone doing this? Why isn't every registration, why is it the norm that a registration is conducted on paper, entered into Excel, when this undoubtedly delays life-saving humanitarian assistance? Well, the good news is that our experience in Somalia has shown that humanitarian organizations see this transition to digital data collection as inevitable. Everybody we talk to feels that in, this, in the near future they'll be doing this. The reasons they're not doing it now come down to three myths and a hangover. The first myth is about connectivity. Humanitarians are not isolated without communications. The, you, most of your humanitarian workers begin and end their day somewhere with a, a VSAT connection or better. By collecting data offline and pushing it when we have connect connectivity, we've been able to, to, to use our system in some very remote and difficult areas. No place is more insecure than South Central Somalia. And what we found is that humanitarian, the, the same access negotiation strategies that you use for program implementation apply. And that local authorities are often not objecting to the technology as much as they're objecting to the accountable and transparent uh, distribution of assistance. In Garaway, Somalia, we've provided assist we've uh, gone from turning on the phone to mapping an IDP settlement in a matter of hours. This isn't hard. 
Um, we can't forget the, the hangover. All these organizations have gone through very traumatic uh, IT initiatives that have, that, have, that have left them scarred, and we have to be sensitive to this and these kinds of things. So how do we overcome these challenges to realize the benefits of this revolution? At M Fieldwork, we've seen that it's direct experience led by early adopters that's the key. If organizations can have experience using this technology with work they have to do anyway, the barriers quickly start to fall away. I'm here to challenge you to push your organizations with this agenda so that humanitarianism can take advantage of, uh, can enter the 21st century and take advantage of real data, uh, medium data. 